podcasting live from the crossroads at Hawaiian Bryan's, the guys with issues, starring James Money, Russell Kealoha, and Chad Wago. What's up, ladies and gentlemen, and frustrated human beings all over the world? <laughs> and when I say frustrated, I mean sexually frustrated. That's a lot of human beings. Then. There's a lot of human beings sexually frustrated. Yeah, I think one out of two people in any room would be sexually frustrated. You yeah. have a girlfriend. I don't. Kind of. You kind of <laughs> tell who would be that person. Is me. Neither do the boys in my band, as I am I am frustrated in all kinds of ways. Yeah? First of all, traffic. Last week when we drove down here, right. it, it didn't take us that long. Mm. Today, it took us much longer. Well, one, I had to go west to pick you up at your house. You don't live that far from me. The right. next, the, basically, the next city over. And on the freeway at 2.30... In the afternoon, westbound. Now, if you're not from Hawaii, westbound is where majority of the traffic is going, leaving the downtown business district, going home to t- tons of homes west west side. Right. They close the middle lane on the freeway. You know why? I mean, it's kinda, it sounds kind of... Because they want us to be frustrated. Oh, okay. Oh, no, I know. That lane of the freeway was furloughed today. <laughs> the government shut down that lane of the freeway. They couldn't afford them. No, they can't. They say, you know what? Out of the three lanes in this section of the freeway, majority of the freeway has five or six lanes. Right. This one section, because the freeway, uh, it um, it's the H1, H2 uh, interchange where H2 goes up north and then the H1 continues west. Right. It's right after that by Leeward Community College – they decided to, when it when it when it when it comes down to three lanes, they decided, hey, let's furlough the middle lane. Just to just to confuse people and frustrate people. Now, what happens is around seven o'clock, and they've been doing this for months, right. which basically in um road rage years, it, that's like twenty years. 20 years is what it feels like. That's how long it felt closed. Right. I feel like when I was in elementary, when I was in sixth grade, this freeway has been closed. Now, I was driving when I was in sixth grade. I'm, sh- I'm pretty sure I was. But it's been closed at 7 p.m. A rush hour isn't technically they say it's done. Right. But it's not done because people in Hawaii, they like to go and have some drinks before they go home and have to deal with their eight kids. <laughs> they like to get high before they drive home, before they have to deal with their spouses, because some have more than one spouse. Right. Would that be spies? Spices? Spices. Spousei. Spousei. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I mean, spouses, I mean, whether it's your husband or your wife, of course you love them to death. But not after work. After work is when I say, hey, I'm just going to go. Home. Oh, thanks. Thanks. Like, after work is kind of like, I'm just going to go. Um, um, I'm not going to deal with you today. Or right now. Yes. Right. I got, I got distracted. Um, see, that's how frustrated I am. Road rage. Road rage is, if if they say obesity is the sickness, and 
Using drugs is a sickness. Oh. Road rage should be a sickness too. So when I get out of my car and punch somebody in the face for cutting me off, I should be able to use that excuse. Is that how you're going to get a handicap parking? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> and then I'll get my handicap placard so I can park in handicap parking spaces because I suffer from road rageositis, which is a real sickness, right? Or road rage road rageaholic road rage road rage road rage right well that's what you do when you suffer from road rage you pick up a road rage hoe and you tax that road rage i'm sorry i'm going off a topic <laughs> i just I, i'm just not in a good mood today because of the traffic that's all over this island on the island of oahu and it's no longer Honolulu. It's not just downtown anymore. It's the whole island. Right. You can't even go on the North Shore without seeing traffic. We have too many cars. And that is the first thing on my mind today on this episode of the Guys with Issues. It's one of our issues. Right. Welcome, listeners, to episode 65 to the Guys with Issues. Uh, my name is James Mane. As always, I am with Russell Kealoha. Hello, bitches. Hey, he showed up for work today. Speaking of showing up for work today, <laughs> who is suffering from a different, uh, w- I guess, work rage or work, work rage holic? He needs a road. He rage is listening. I'm just letting you know that. <laughs> <laughs> he needs a road rage ho so that he can feel better. Uh, we're missing one guy today. We're we are two thirds today. Is that right? Two thirds. Yeah. Okay. Two thirds. Yeah. Because another one would make a three, which would make a whole team. Right. Anyways, the supposed comedian Chad Wago is not here right now. And you guys have been listening to the uh, previous episodes. You guys know that he works and he makes his way down to the studio. And then we, you know, we do stuff. But today he called and he was upset because at work, just when he's about to finish or get off or end work... <laughs> Or money shot, wherever, <laughs> wherever you want to take this. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, they dumped another load of work on his desk and said, "Hey, you're the lowest one on the totem pole." And I don't mean that by rank. I mean you're short. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> do the rest of this work, and it's due by today. And uh, this is like just before he's supposed to finish work. Poor guy. Yeah, still in the office. You got to watch out for those kind of guys. Hey, did you even give uh, the, give the people a live traffic report so we know we're live? I just did. They closed the, f- um, the, 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 uh, they furloughed that lane. Right. Um, <laughs> is there any other traffic that you, that you saw? Or there was, there was one on our way over here, right? Yeah. There's just a lot of traffic going. Yeah. If you're going east, you're going west, you're going north, or you're going south, anywhere on this island, Malka or Makai. It's pretty crappy out there. Yeah, welcome to Hawaii. Yes, and it's hot as hell, too. So those of you that don't have air conditioners, too bad for you. Roll down your window, and you sit there in that heat. Oh, that sucks. Oh, what, what would be worse, though? Sitting in the heat? You're like, you don't have air conditioning in your car. Right. That sucks totally. And then, so you roll down your window because it's hot. Okay. You're on the freeway, stuck in traffic. So you're not getting any breeze. Is that worse or is when it pours? Because if you roll up your window, you're basically suffocating yourself because you're just breathing in your own exhale. And then the, the, you know, the, the windows get steamy and you get no air that way either. So what's worse? No air, no <laughs> air. <laughs> so, so what's worse there, uh, Jordan Sparks? <laughs> it, it, <laughs> it doesn't matter, right? I mean... I think, I don't know. I'd rather have the, the sun rather than the rain. What would you? I don't know. I, just, I would like air conditioner more, <laughs> more than the sun or the rain. Okay, it, you, the can choose up. you can choose between A or B, but you decide to go with D. <laughs> I gave you two options, and you went with your own answer. <laughs> <laughs> and there's, there's more issues. Now, I, 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 the reason I bring that up is, it was storming like crazy on Monday. It right. was Monday, right? Right. Yeah, it was like um, 
like a flash um, thunderstorm or lightning storm or lightning thunderstorm. It was a pretty big storm that just came through, but it was only like it only lasted for like an hour or two. There was a lightning show. There was a loud thunder. Animals was going crazy um, and pets, too. Um, and it was weird because the news with the weather people, I'm doing air quotations, folks, air quotations. <laughs> the weather folk, the meteorologists, they all of a sudden jump in and they go, oh, tomorrow's going to be worse. It's like, really? Yes, if the storm was today, more is expected tomorrow, which is Tuesday, which is yesterday. Right. And yesterday was one of the most beautiful days of the year. Ever. Ever okay, ever. Today was a beautiful day. But yes, what I'm saying is they were saying, they were predicting that yesterday was going to be horrible. It's going to rain. It's going to thunderstorm. It's going to be worse than the previous day. And it was beautiful. Mm. Uh, nothing against, you know, Guy Hagi, nothing against Justin Cruz. I per I know Justin Cruz personally. He's a really nice guy. Right. Nothing against uh, Jennifer Robbins. And what's your boy? Um, ben Gutierrez. Ben Gutierrez. He's my boy. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, nothing against them, but I think it's got to be, like, pretty hard to predict the weather and the giant Pacific Ocean on this little tiny island. I almost did like a dance for you there. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> On this giant, vast ocean <laughs> called the Pacific. The island of Hawaii. <laughs> <laughs> it's got to be tough to to um, predict the weather, what's going to be like. Mm. A lot of times they say, oh, it's partially cloudy. Yeah, they Sh give you the most gen generic. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> There's a chance of rain oh yeah well there's a chance i could fly too <laughs> <laughs> there's a chance of that you know there's no guarantees but there's a chance of it and they get paid thousands of dollars to guess right i mean i mean they know their best guess okay my best guess and then and they've been trained to make be better guesses than us <laughs> yeah. let me tell you something i can go look outside and say hey sunny today <laughs> Unless you're where it's raining, <laughs> then it's raining for you. Then it's uh, no bueno. Yes, no bueno for you. I'm just saying. I mean, nothing against them. I know that, that you know they worked hard. They went to meteorologist school, <laughs> or yeah. the the school of the meteorologicals, <laughs> or whatever. That's I've never heard of a meteorologist school, but wherever whatever that went, is. Yes, I get maybe that's at Heald or something, or. <laughs> <laughs> or my business or, or full <laughs> sale university <laughs> the one you always see on the on the internet <laughs> university of phoenix in hawaii <laughs> <laughs> every time i see that university of phoenix uh, you think arizona phoenix arizona but right. not me i think phoenix as in the the bird the mythical bird that came back from the rose it's from the come ashes it's come in uh eat you yes well no <laughs> <laughs> it's coming at me with the um with a nursing degree and uh <laughs> And computer I'll make it better. <laughs> and, cacao, com cacao. <laughs> and computer tech knowledge. Mm. <laughs> it's coming t to fix the computer at my job. Okay. And <laughs> they're like Phoenix, risen from the ashes. Mm. The University of Phoenix, Phoenix. The Phoenix. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I made it into a Tongan school, but <laughs> <laughs> whatever. <laughs> you br you brought up another point. You, I'm sorry, I'm going off topic, but. You did the voice when you said, of Hawaii. <laughs> Why do they always do that? <laughs> they can never say, like, in the ancient days of Hawaii. They go, in the ancient days of Hawaii. It's, like, so dramatic. I wish you could see your face. <laughs> 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 Hawaii. <-ki. Yeah. laughs> they make it so, like, like it's, like, like, um, like, holy. Like, I guess it would be holy for the people the native Hawaiian people. Right. right. Like yourself, right? You I am. You are, right? I am. Get right. off my land, everybody. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> it finally came out. Russell <laughs> Russell Kealoha wants you off his land. Yeah. Just leave the money. Oh, well, why why can't we do that when the when the country was shut down? Right. If nothing was working, we should have <laughs> Right. Okay, see this is how live we are. The guys are issues. It's official. 
the, sh uh, um, the government shutdown is over. Well, President Obama just has to go and sign. He yeah, called us today. He said, hey, Jimmy. Hey, Russie. Hey, uh, uh, hey Jimmy. Yeah. <laughs> hey, what's up? What's up, Barry? I'm, I'm doing great. How, how are you doing, sir? I'm doing all right. You know, you know, we live in Hawaii. You know what it's like. You used to live here. You know what I'm saying? You know, that birth certificate we made for you. <laughs> <laughs> so Moving on. So, so <laughs> you're going to sign or what? I, I'm going to sign immediately. Oh, see? Oh, okay. And that was our conversation today, me and Barry. And that's how it went. Yeah, me and Barry. Uh, Barry used to, um, you know, used to smoke weed with, uh, with uh, Russell's uncles back in the day at uh, Punahou. Um, I was going to say my uncles, but let's keep it real. There was only two Samoans <laughs> at, that <time. laughs> at that time. One of them he might have known. I don't know. But, yeah, this they we're actually in, in, in Barry's old stomping ground. Yeah. Barry Obama. Used to call him, my uncle used to call him B-Dog. B-Dog, right? <laughs> B-Dog. What's up? B-Dog, your mama. <laughs> What's so funny is that we was at his house the other day, and he goes, who would have thought B-Dog was going to be president of the United States? But anyways, we are uh, uh, podcasting live at the, um, at the Crossroads in Hawaiian Bryan's, which is... Um, in the crossroads uh, between Waikiki and Honolulu, kind of. Yeah, I, I see how that makes sense now. I was I was trying to figure it out, but you made it make sense. Uh, the crossroads at Hawaiian Bryan's is at 1680 Kapiolani Boulevard. Um, the one thing I would say about this place: at five o'clock p.m., the kitchen opens up, and Holy cow. I love the food here. Firehouse Kitchen inside Hawaiian Brian's delicious show. Mm -hmm. You try the poke bowls, folks. Yes. Uh, people who aren't from Hawaii is trying to figure out what Russell just said. Yes, he said poke bowl. <laughs> <laughs> My question, the po poke bowl? Poke bowl. Yeah, the poke bowl is uh, a fish and... They have rice in there, and they got all kinds of seasonings that makes it delicious. I get the spicy one because because I'm Puerto Rican. I like spicy. You're Puerto <laughs> Rican Samoan. <laughs> yeah, my daughter could have been Puerto Rican Samoan. I could have had a Puerto Rican Samoan kid. My uh, one of my exes was Puerto Rican, and she was late once, and we were like, "What? Oh no! Why <laughs> <laughs> <One> no?" <laughs> Oh no! It's gonna be a giant Puerto Rican. Oh no! <laughs> it's gonna be a big giant Samoan that can dance the salsa. Oh, my my kid could have been Victor Cruz. Who knows? That would have been <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Victor Cruz as my son. Right out of the womb. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow! Right out of the womb. My my kid can play football. Yeah. <laughs> at a collegiate level. <laughs> I bet you, my kid would. My daughter is actually a good athlete. My, if I had a, a son, he, he play football. I'm not saying that girls can't play football. Right. You know, they just can't play it as well as boys. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mean that, fellas. <laughs> I mean, ladies. All right, all right, all right. I'm getting out of control. We were talking about traffic. I hate traffic. Traffic hates me. There was this... Um, there's this law in here in Hawaii where if somebody steps into the crosswalk, you have to stop. I understand why that rule is there because of safety, right? Right. right. And that's. I don't. I don't know if any other uh, places in the country have that that rule. Oh, really? Or law? You mean the law? The law. Yeah. Law. Yeah. It's not like some rule that's on the. One of the crosswalking poles or anything. Yeah. Well, but you need you need to stop. You need to stop yeah. and let the person cross the street. Well, Not you go you go place like Nebraska. You know, maybe like um, uh, cousin sex Nebraska or something. <laughs> it's probably no traffic there, so you know, not many people crossing the street. Right. You don't have to watch out for a, a, a tractor trailer or mm -hmm. no. What do you call those? Uh, um, those plows or whatever is that. Plows up so the like wheat. Snow plow? No, the the, the wheat no. thing. Mr. Plow. You don't need to watch out for that over there. You know, there's nobody really crossing. It's not busy like here. Yeah. Anyway, so the 
the law has been around for a while. People have been pedestrians. See how my hand just became like a tiger claw? It didn't come like a tiger. It looked like you were going to choke somebody. Yeah. Pedestrians. Yeah. The pedestrians that cross the street because of this law are using abusing their right. I understand you have the right. I am supposed to stop. And I, I do stop. I will stop. Can't stop. Won't stop. Yes. <laughs> but you do stop. But I do stop. <laughs> because it's the law. And right. not only that, it's safety. And safety is important. And I'm all for that. I don't want dead people under my car. Okay. That, I'm waiting for the butt part. But the people that abuse it really frustrate the hell out of me. You explain abuse. How are you going to abuse it? They see you coming down. They can wait until you... And you're the only car out there. Right. There's no cars behind me for 10 minutes. And that's a long time right. in road years. That's a long time in general. Yeah. So why not say, you go car, I'll walk behind you. No. They'll, they'll, they'll run on the sidewalk and then jump into this crosswalk, crosswalk so that I have to stop. Do you know that if you're okay, so. that I you know they force me to stop. Right. I don't like that, but I will. You know, if I see you going, and I will oh, stop. So, so you just don't like anybody impeding your way. But it, be courteous <laughs> is what I'm saying. Oh, Courte don't, um, don't some of them just wave you on? Like go, go ahead. Not yeah. all. See, some, okay. One time this happened. This person, while well, I was about to, I was getting real close to the crosswalk, and then they jumped in front, or they. They're not in front of me yet. I'm in the right lane. Right. This is a one-way street, four lanes going in one. I'm going in the, the, the direction that the lane is going. And this person is on the left side. And instead of waiting till I pass through, they, they like speed walked in front of me. So I have to stop. Then when they get in front of me, they started slowing down. Maybe they're just jerks. jerks. Yeah, just Thank jerks. you. So here's what I'm uh, what is here's what I'm trying to say. Okay, I'll obey the law. Okay, I'll honor your safety and I won't run you over. I'll stop. But I should have the right to cuss you out while you cross the street. And they can't do anything about it. Like just yell like stupid ass. I'm trying not to yell because I don't want the people in Hawaiian Bryant's to get yeah. <laughs> What's going on in there? There's a fight in the ping pong room. Yeah, who's he yelling at? <laughs> There's two guys facing each other in a room yelling at each other. What's going <laughs> on? <laughs> and and uh, anyways, we should be able to say hurry hurry the hell up or or even just 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 cuss them out like they 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 have the right of way. They can take their time crossing the street. If I can just So you're saying that the law should be that you should be able to verbally abuse them yes, as they or, walk across the street, or even not not a written law. Maybe like um, like uh, I'm sure you can go ahead and do that if you want to. Well, see, some people they know how to fight. Uh, <laughs> I don't. You know, we should tell them, hey, you. I stop for you. You should at least let me curse you out. <laughs> And then I just let out, and that way there's no road rage when I drive. I'll feel better. I'll be like, really? you asshole, how dare you? I know your father, and he's a jerk. You know, or it doesn't even have to be anything to do with crossing the street. Right. Well, what if some people, but if some, you take it too far, and then somebody else just gets mad, like, you're like. No, but see, that's the law. I can take it too far and just run right through the crosswalk. Oh. But, if but it, I stop. So is that what you're going to say when you come up to your car? Yeah. But, hey, I stop. I stop. It's the law. It's the law. The camera's the looking. Law. It's the law. I'm going to call 911 on my cell phone. After I turn off my engine. <laughs> After I turn on my engine and roll up my window. Because <laughs> that's the law, too. You can't use your phone while the engine is on. There was a cop that pulled over this girl uh, for talking on. Oh, no. Her seatbelt wasn't on. So she pulled over and he came over. You know why I pulled you over? Yada, yada, yada. Registration, license, the whole nine. And then so she picks up her phone. To call, I don't know, her mom or her sister. Right. So I just got pulled over. I'm going to be late. And he wrote her another ticket for using the phone while the engine was on. Wow. <laughs> Even though he, he had already pulled her over. See, I know the laws. So I haven't been arrested. But. Yet. I, <laughs> <laughs> I hope never, man. I've seen some of these movies with prisons and I ain't ready for that. <laughs> I got a big booty. Let me just say that. Yeah. I might be a fan of the brothers, you know. 
We're like, oh, look at look at sunshine. Sunshine. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I apologize. Uh, it's, anyways, that's what I'm saying. We should be able to cuss them out, even if it has nothing to do. Just let us vent. Mm. I think that's what it is. That's what we should do. That's how you solve road rage. Like, don't do anything physical. Just yell and just, just like, let it out. Yeah, your mom's a whore. <laughs> you know, and then it's like, I know, and you, you, you in your car or you crossing the street can just walk and be like, I know he doesn't mean it or or something like that. You know what I mean? Like, he, how does he know? Or I know you're just venting and you don't really hate my mother. <laughs> and just go about your day, or maybe you can yell back. Your mom's a whore. It's like, oh yeah, my mom's your sister. I don't know, something, <laughs> or whatever. I'm just saying they should allow us to vent. And there should be a moment where like a referee comes up, he goes, "Oh snap, fight!" <laughs> <laughs> That's what we should have in public. Referees, <laughs> referees. <laughs> <laughs> no police, just referees. You know, maybe like if, if, if in, you're speeding, somebody throws a yellow flag at your car. <laughs> like, whoa, what happened? <laughs> referees. What is wrong with you, Russell Kellogg? Something is wrong with you. Maybe I'm the bam. That's why. Bam. The bam. Oh my goodness. No, I can't. I can't go to put a harbor anymore because they're gonna reopen it, and I'm the bam. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyways, uh, uh, yes, um, the the um, government shutdown is over. Uncle Barry has called us and uh, let us know. Right. B dog as um, uh, Russell's uh, dad. And, um, what do we him. get out of this? This whole what sixteen days? I feel sorry for the people who couldn't work. Right. Because, like you said, nothing was gained from shutting down the government for, what, 16 days, you said? Mm-hmm. What, nothing was gained from that. I mean, if you wanted to be, uh, finally wanted to be a rebel for once in your life, you could go to the national park and cross the uh, gate for gated fence. <laughs> and then get arrested for trespassing. Yeah, but there's no one to arrest you because all the rangers <laughs> are furloughed. <laughs> I guess yesterday would have been a good time to start a forest fire. <laughs> yep. <laughs> That's messed up. You know what's awesome is that I think one of the, I guess the most popular uh, national, what, is it considered a park or, or monument here is the Arizona Memorial. It's considered a national monument, yeah? Monument. Okay, so the Arizona Memorial but the visitor center, I would assume, is a park. Well, it's not a park. It's a visitor center. Okay, okay. So, um, like, I guess because they didn't have any employees there, like even the people that would, would um, like, mow the lawn, cut the grass, clean up the garbage, right. they were all furloughed. So um, soldiers, on their own time, actually showed up and started cleaning up the place. They said it's because of to honor those men and women that have fallen you know in, in uh that attack from, from japan right you know at least they they wanted to make have the place look respectable and pretty they didn't say pretty but you know what i'm saying nice gorgeous yes it was like i this looks stunning <laughs> <laughs> so they wanted to make the place look pretty good which good. is awesome thank you yeah so thank you guys so you would have to double thank them because not only did they serve overseas for our freedom, they also, oh, and our gas, um, they also cleaned the yard. Yep. Cool. What have you done for us lately? Yes. What have you done for us? In fact, you can do something for us. You can email us at guyswithissues at gmail.com or you can like our fan page at facebook.com slash guyswithissues. You can also follow us at at Guys With Issues on Twitter. Man, we're, we're everywhere, huh? We are. We're all over the place. I think we, we have a Tumblr. We have so many things. I don't even know. I think there's rumors of a Tumblr. There's uh, hints of a uh, circle. There's um, uh, Google Plus, maybe, somewhere. We're know. everywhere, Bieber. Yeah. We're like um, Justin Bieber. Mm-hmm. Believers, yeah, but we we like we appreciate the feedback. So if you guys have anything, if you disagree with us, or if you just want to voice your opinion, or if you want to just hook us up with whatever you can hook us up with, holla back. 
All right, um, what else we got here? We are filling time because our Chad Wago segment. Will Chad Wago's not here? Yeah, because Chad Wago's not here. He's still working. He's still working. You see what work does for people? Mm-hmm. Message- well, can, I, can I talk about something? I wish quick? you would. You wish I would? I wish you would. You wish you would? Yeah. You wish an N-word would? <laughs> <laughs> no, I wish a mom would. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know if anybody, is, you've seen it. You, actually, I showed it to you, the uh, the simple group people who um, do the, who did the motorboat for uh, breast cancer. Oh, I loved it. Okay. So for those of you who, who haven't and are listening, there's a vi- video up there. We'll post it in the show notes or whatnot. Yeah. Where they offered, they were wearing a sign that offered $20. They will donate $20 for every motorboat that they get. And it's not the kind that you put in the water. It's the kind where you go out and put your face in, in the girl's boobs and go, put it in the chest. Yes. And then they raised about uh, oof, almost a little over $2,000. Wow. That's what, over, over 100 boobs? I don't know. I just didn't do the math on that. Wow. 2,000 divided by 20 is 100, I think. Wow. That's a lot of, that's a lot of boobs you got. And no, no, see, that's not a hundred boobs. That's two hundred boobs. Two hundred boobs because they come in pairs. Right. Oh, yeah. Sure. So wow. I'm, I'm showing this to my lady, you know, like I'm, I'm watching this, and in my head, I'm like, this is genius. That is genius. This is genius. What better way to raise money and do something you love, you know, as a guy? It's like a pastime. You know, I was surprised. I watched the video and I loved it. It's a viral video. It's going around. You guys can check it out on MarsComedy.com. Or at uh, guyswithissues.com. Uh-huh. And these, they were actually grabbing the boobs, smushing them together, putting their face in there, and going. Yeah. And it was amazing. And it was uh, $20. $20. Yeah. I was just wondering is that, Mike, is that Mike Wire in or out? The number two, the Mike Wire. No, the Mike, not the. Uh, It looked weird to me. Oh, okay. Um, but I wonder how many people, how many women they asked that said no, you know? But yeah, exactly. They, I, I don't even know because they were wearing signs. Right. And that said that they would. Now, I'm watching it thinking it's amazing. Mm-hmm. She's next to me watching it going, oh, my God. Who is she? She is my lovely lady. Yeah. And... Put your name on it. <laughs> yeah, and she and she's probably listening to this right now. <laughs> she was, she was like, laughing, and then it got into, I'm very perturbed by watching this. Really? Like it bothered her. And wow. In my head, I'm like, why? To me, I'm like, why would it bother you? Unless they asked her. Yeah, it wasn't. Or... It wasn't like it wasn't like a drive-by, non-consent motorboat. Oh right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, so. Yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't this. Well, I guess it would be different. And we didn't get into it because I didn't want it. I didn't want that conversation. Yeah. I was was enjoying myself. I was enjoying myself, you know, watching this and going, man, this guy has almost solved the the world peace. Maybe they should try that. They should use that. You know what? If we did that with the, the, the congressmen and the senators, I think they would go for that. We just have like a, a big booby chicks walk in and then they got to donate their money mm. to, to motorboat. They would do it. I mean, they're already paying for prostitution, right? <laughs> Allegedly. <laughs> Alleg- yeah. Okay, wiener. Wiener, wiener. But, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just thinking, like, you know, I, why would you get mad? Why would they get mad, folks? If anybody's listening, why would you get mad at that? I guess because it's a woman. You know, we should do that. We should do that. Maybe we should go out, but we should. You should do that. Yes. Okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> Usually when I say we, I'm referring to me and Chad. Yeah. So we could do that, <clears throat> but we go and do it to guys. <laughs> <laughs> guys with boobies. Because, you know, guys with issues, casts do have <laughs> guys with boobies. I mean, I, okay, I'm in. I'll do it. Say, yeah, I mean, well, if you do it to a guy, right? I mean, it would be funny. Maybe, oh, okay. Me and Chad will do it to women because we're both single. 
and you do it to the men because you are with women. Or I could not do it at all. Just <laughs> oh, watch. Hey, guys got to get motorboated too, man. <laughs> there is a niche. I need to fill it. Huh? Yeah. There's a gap in his chest and you need to fill it. <laughs> yeah, maybe you should. Maybe you should. Okay, I do have chat. Actually, I do have chat on, on Facebook Messenger mm-hmm. who's saying objection it's object objectification of the women <laughs> now chad even at work where you should be doing your work so you can get here get he to des- work chad decides to chime in and say oh well I mean, it's obje- objectification of a woman but not really because it's their consent consent there's consent and i guess it's just like the whole porn thing where women is like oh they're they're I can't even say because I don't know what it is degrading right. women, but the women that we've met that do porn, they love yeah. doing it. I think I, sometimes I think it's like just there's a, a niche of women who think it's like you know who get offended by watching I, I over think, 100 over 100 women uh, you know say okay you you can go ahead and do it, and then not like the, he asked them to take off their top, no. which is what I would do. Yeah, you would. <laughs> so, okay, uh, top is optional but <laughs> uh, but I gotta be motored to boat motored to boat optional but preferred yes I think women who get offended by porn they're they, they say that they degrade women the porn industry degrade women I think they're selfish those women are selfish wow <laughs> because Are you putting your name on this yes James Bond thinks they're selfish Go ahead. And you know why well I, I'd love to know why because they're ignoring the man who is in these videos too. <laughs> what about his feelings? What if he didn't want to go to work today, but oh, I signed a contract. I got to show up and have sex with these beautiful women. And come on, let's face it. Not all of them are beautiful. <laughs> Sometimes it, and then see women, when they're not in the mood, you know, they just use some oils and whatever's and then, you know, stores open. Guys, we got to, you know, there's a lot of mind power that goes into, you know, flicking on the and switch. A lot, and a lot more noticeable. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Which is why, you know, is we we have to be into it. If we're not into it, it's pretty obviously we're not into it. So there's guys that are working hard, you know, like the uh, Evan Handlers, the, uh, um, or is it Evan Stone, or what are their names? I'm making... Is Evan Stone a real actor that I just threw him into porn? Did you um, just make up a, a person? Yeah. <laughs> I think there's an Evan something. Mm. Uh, there's um, um, Lexington Steele and uh. Mr. Marcus. Yeah, these guys, you know, they're slapping these women around, but maybe that's what those women are into, and they are giving those women what they need to get there. So women that get... Uh, uh, offended by you know porn industry I, I think I just I, just, I could hear like all the women in the world just roll their eyes whoever's listening to this show <laughs> well email us at guyswithissues at gmail.com and let me know how you feel so whatevers 7-Eleven is always ready with everyday essentials we're ready with emergency items With over 2,400 items, 7-Eleven has much more than you expect. Come visit us in Hawaii. The great proud birds of Continental Airlines will bring you here in the very nicest way. They move like a million hummingbirds to do your every wish with food and drink and loving care. Continental Airlines will fly you to Hawaii. For not so many bucks. Continental Airlines, Yeah, not many bucks, Russell. Not many bucks. Not a lot, but not many. Not many at all. Yeah. You know, I don't know if you watched um, the NFL football on Sunday. Uh, of course, I watched NFL football. It's well, funny the way I said it. Why did I say it like that? <laughs> like it's a like it's an alien beast or something. 
Did you watch the alien football? Uh, alien football. Now I'm saying crap. Yeah, yeah. Did you watch? I'm getting a phone call. Who is it? I don't know. Let me find out. All right. Let's take a phone call. All right. Hello? Yes? Yes, I did receive my Sports uh, Illustrated football phone. Uh, right. Oh. Can I... Uh, I wanted to give you a call back. I'm in the middle of something right now. <laughs> um, can I, I'll give you a call. I'll give you a, this is how live we are, I'll folks. Morning, James tomorrow. Monty takes I'm phone calls. He Sorry. takes phone calls in the middle of our show. Yeah, uh, a- after nine. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Bye. That was a bill collector. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, a number I didn't recognize. Maybe it could be somebody who... Wanted to talk about something on the air. And then when he mentioned my bill, and I was like, oh, I'm going to have to call you tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> James, he did. <laughs> uh, no habla espanol or no habla ingles. Um, Jaime Mane. It's in Japanese. I don't know what's going on. Jaime Mane. <laughs> James C. James C. Oh, that's Korean. That's how the old Korean ladies call me. Mm. James C. All right, so anyways, Bob Costas was on uh, NFL Sunday, or Sunday on NFL, Sunday night on NBC. Right. It was um, the Redskins versus the Cowboys, I believe, right? Uh Uh-huh. And all of a sudden, you know, um, during halftime, Bob Costas decides to chime in on how he feels about the whole Redskins um, name and... Um, they should be the Washington Redskins football team should change it or whatever. That's been it's been controversial for so long, but it's I guess it's coming up again. So he put his two cents in. Did uh, you? Have, what, did, what did he say? You have it queued. Uh, when you have it queued, then you can go ahead and play it because basically, in my opinion, he interrupted the football momentum. We're watching football. I I agree with what he's talking about, and I agree if if there was a team called the um, the Seattle Samoan Slappers, I'd be like, hey, wait a minute, that is a weird name. <laughs> why why got to be Samoan? Anybody can slap, you know. So uh, you know, it's I mean, uh, you guys listen, you guys tell uh, tell us what you think by emailing us at guysofissues at gmail dot com. Uh, seems like an appropriate time to acknowledge the ongoing controversy about the name Redskins. Let's start here. There's no reason to believe that owner Daniel Snyder or any official or player from his team harbors animus toward Native Americans or wishes to disrespect them. This is undoubtedly also true of the vast majority of those who don't think twice about the long-standing moniker. And in fact, as best can be determined, even a majority of Native Americans say they are not offended. But having stipulated that, there's still a distinction to be made. Objections to names like Braves, Chiefs, Warriors, and the like strike many of us as political correctness run amok. These nicknames honor rather than demean. They're pretty much the same as Vikings, Patriots, or even Cowboys. And names like Blackhawks, Seminoles, and Chippewas, while potentially more problematic, can still be okay, provided the symbols are appropriately respectful which is where the Cleveland Indians, with the combination of their name and Chief Wahoo logo, have sometimes run into trouble. A number of teams, mostly in the college ranks, have changed their names in response to objections. The Stanford Cardinal and the Dartmouth Big Green were each once the Indians. The St. John's Redmen have become the Red Storm. And the Miami of Ohio Redskins, that's right, Redskins, are now the Red Hawks. Still, the NFL franchise that represents the nation's capital has maintained its name. But think for a moment about the term Redskins and how it truly differs from all the others. Ask yourself what the equivalent would be if directed toward African Americans, Hispanics, Asians, or members of any other ethnic group. When considered that way, Redskins can't possibly honor a heritage or a noble character trait nor can it possibly be considered a neutral term. It's an insult, a slur, no matter how benign the present day intent. It's fair to say that for a long time now, and certainly in 2013, no offense has been intended. But if you take a step back, 
isn't it clear to see how offense might legitimately be taken? For more on this topic, including Daniel Snyder's take. You see, you hear, I mean, I understand, and I agree, you know, he makes a valid point. But during the game. <laughs> it, it was like a Debbie Downer. Yeah. Debbie yeah. Downer for you, huh? Yeah, it was like a pop up ad. See, pop -up I'm. Ad. <laughs> <laughs> it basically is. It's like he, he he jumps in when you're focusing on something else. And I didn't dig that. I mean, I don't know how you feel about that. I didn't watch that. So, well, okay. but do I do I think it's Redskins is I don't know cause I, I never How do you how do you feel about what he said though? I just never thought of Redskins as a racial slur, but I never grew up on it. I always just thought when someone said Redskins is like, well, football team. True, true, true. But yeah. I, I agree with what about about the pig, pig skins, you know, because they dress up like pigs over there, hogs, they hogs. Not the Native Americans, but not the, the Native the Americans, fans. the fans. <laughs> the they fans. dress up like hogs. Right. I agree with you. It's just, um, because uh, yeah, like I said, if if there was something like if it was a Latinos or or black people, like if they said the black skins, and then you see on their on their um, um, logo is a black face paint something or something. <laughs> Or maybe it was like Martin Luther King or something. <laughs> or Red Fox. Red <laughs> Fox. <laughs> Red Fox. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the Brooklyn Blackskins. And they had a picture of Red Fox on the side. <laughs> I give you four of these, but I don't want to get none of that dog spit on my hand. <laughs> you old heathen. <laughs> <laughs> you jive sucker. That's messed up. Oh, why did you say that, Chad? Why did you say that, Chad Wago? Chad Wago said that. That was his impersonation. Yeah. <laughs> Chad Wago in the house. In the house. Yeah, but the, I I mean, I agree with what he's saying. Because if it was another uh if it was another race or whatever, that would be messed up. But, uh, you know. I but I think if somebody has if it was okay, like remember I was saying the uh uh um, Brooklyn black, black, black skin, face, black face, or whatever. It was a white guy telling me that's racist. I'm not gonna, you know, if it was a black person telling me that's racist, then be like, okay, that's hey, yo, man, that ain't right. Well, <laughs> well you know what I'm saying, man? <laughs> Why you gotta be like that, yo? <laughs> Boy, that's messed. But, but like, uh, excuse me, um, pardon me. Uh, I believe we have offended a certain uh, uh, general. Uh, of the population, uh, like whatever, man. So, so you're saying it? Well, what, where, where, where are you standing on? Where are you standing on? Which side? I think it should be changed. Wow. Not because it was named at a time where racism was okay. <laughs> I mean, come on, back in like you ever listen to some of Don Rickles' old, <laughs> old comedy stuff? Is that dude's racist? Back then, you know. You can even watch some Hawaii Five O from back in the days and be like, "Whoa, settle down with the racism." Uh, Today is different. It's different time. Times change. You know, we should we should change it. I don't know what to. But if they want to keep something Native American, do they want to keep it Native? I mean, what what would you change it to? For something. Native Didn't they change like the one one team was named the Bullets at one time? Oh, the Washington Bullets, the yeah. name of the Capitals now. Yeah, the Capitals. Oh, and now it's Washington Wizards. I'm Is sorry. It? it was Washington Bullets, and it changed to Wizards. Because Bullets was violence. Too real. Made it. Yes. Made Washington too real. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's true. At, and at that time in the 80s, there was a lot of bullets flying around in Washington. Not enough in the right area, yeah. but it was in the yeah. nah. darker area. Of the capital, so but none of the wizards. <laughs> yeah. That's so weird. So the, it, they would they went the opposite way. Right. <laughs> Instead of something that's real that gets you know that's violence, they went with a mythical character who is because wizards do violent things, right? Right. They kill dragons <gasps> and they they tell you you shall not pass. <laughs> yeah. And then they fight to the after death. Right. Yes. And then they come back white. You they see? come back white. What? what? The more powerful the wizard, it becomes white. 
there's racism. We should one episode we should break down Lord of the Rings and how racist that movie really. Because me and my daughter are watching it, and we're just breaking it down. Is it why? Why you gotta have only one, you know, little person left in the world? There wasn't one little person left in the world. Well, when I meant little person, it was the dwarf. He was the last one. Okay. Why couldn't they just use that one bird they used at the end of the movie to take them all the way to the volcano at the beginning of the movie? <laughs> that bird goes through don't they, time? Don't they, like, ride a bird? Yeah, the but they don't go through time, though, do they? Yeah, but why, when he was walking there, why didn't they just use the bird in the first place? Right. And because then there'll be... the volcano. There will be no movie. <laughs> Just like um, I was watching, it would be the never-ending story. <laughs> yeah. I was watching um, um, a TV show is that um, I don't think you like uh, Big Bang Theory. I love the show. Right. So the character Sheldon and his girlfriend Amy Farrah Fowler is it Farrah Fowler? Amy yep. Fowler. So they're watching. He introduces her to um, Indiana Jones. They watch the Raiders of the Lost Ark. At the end of this, the movie, she goes, "Hmm." And he's like, what's wrong? And so she tells him that if India, Indiana Jones' character is irrelevant in the movie, because if he wasn't in the movie, the, the, the Nazis would have still found the Ark, right. took it to the island, and melted them, their faces and died if there was no Indiana Jones in the movie. What? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> think about it. You sit there. You're kind of like, that's right, <laughs> and then and they, then they, their their argument was no he had he they were digging in the wrong place. Indiana Jones found where the ark really was. Is it well? Indiana Jones had the medallion in the beginning that he had. The other guy would have gotten the medallion if Indiana Jones wasn't there. You remember he went to that bar? Right. He would have the guy with the creepy guy with the glasses. He would have got the medallion, found the ark. Took it to the island, melted their faces. So it still would have ended the same way, no matter what. <laughs> and then no matter how many times I tried to figure out another way, it's like, no, it's true. Indiana Jones is irrelevant to Indiana Jones the movie. Yeah, but we have someone who is relevant. Yes, to our house. show. Pull up a chair. Pull up Sa- a chair. Chad Wago couldn't show up. He's working today. Today, we have a special guest in the studio. We have the uh, Colombian drug lord, Chad Santiago. You got to turn on the uh, microphone there, uh, senor. Yo. There he is, Santiago. Man, you got it pretty fast. Did you catch the bus down there? No, my mom's gave me a ride. Oh, <laughs> moms. Moms. Yeah. Moms. He, I like <laughs> There's no way you can make it sound cooler than what just happened. Say, my mom gave me a ride. Yo, you know what I'm saying? Mom Dukes gave me a ride. You know what I'm saying? But uh, uh, we'll let Chad get settled in. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back. It's funny because I'm crazy. If you're not crazy, it's not funny. Now, let me tell you something. We're not supposed to, legally, we're not supposed to be talking about this. But we're going to talk a little bit about something. We're going to hint about what happened. And if you draw up your own conclusions out there, then that's what you think happened. It doesn't mean it's what really happened. So... Chad and I went to this party. No, it was not at any particular uh, business. Yes. It was a private party, 
meaning the place was it wasn't、uh, a place of work or it wasn't a place of business. It was a place. A place. Hawaii's that, premier place. Yes, it was a place that、um, people go to to see thing, beautiful things, bountiful and bouncy things,、um, parts of things, and.、Um, And、um, curvy things,、um, smooth and silky lace type things.、Um, uh, This is the worst game of charades ever.、Uh, what do you call it?、Um, glittery things. <laughs>、uh, um, so, anyways, we went to this party to celebrate the, a birthday, an eight year old birthday. If you <laughs> Go on. It was.、Um, Um, a lot of alcohol. It was an open bar party.、Mm-hmm. Um, there w a s bouncy castles. Yes.、Uh, <laughs> there was a.、Um, there was? Yes. Wow. There was a. f o r a given value of castle. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> there was there was actually. A giant bear? Yeah, yeah, no, it was a monkey. Oh, it was. Oh, no, there was. It was a little bear. Oh, okay. No, no, I think it was a squirrel. It actually looked like the Kia.、Uh, <laughs> The Kia, what do you call it? <laughs> Hamster? I think they're chipmunks, right? Is it chipmunks? The, key, the Kia、okay. commercial? Yeah. There was w- one there. There was actually a tall monkey、mm-hmm. that was playing music. There was a lot of laser lights.、Um, there was a, a, free, a buffet,、mm-hmm. open bar.、Um, there was some dancing.、Um, some might call it、uh, the the Seduction dance of the femur? Or, <laughs> is, the, or is it the humerus? The, what is. I think, I think it would be the.、Uh, the fibula? Seduction dance of the lap. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I was trying not to he, say he was, that word. He was trying to figure out which bone is in your lap. Well, <laughs> you know, you, I, I, I could tell you what, there was a bone in somebody else's lap. <laughs> But, um. <clears throat> um Um, Back to a point, well, it, was,、uh, it was a good time. It was a good time.、Um, Always a good time. Yeah, it was a really good time. I appreciate、um, being invited to that place. Yes, it was a private party, nothing to do with any business anywhere. And、um, just, about, just a get together, close friends on a private、um, VIP list. At the guys with, guys with issues. We're invited to. Yes. And the, there was one of the two,、uh, one third that was missing. Right. And was replaced by the other third.、Mm-hmm. The, the, in, the invisible partner. Yes. The business partner that shows up in happy time. <laughs> <laughs> For happy time at happy place. But see, I knew that I had to call. I was like, hey, because I haven't hung out with him in a long time.、So、right. I was like, Sarge, we got to go. It was a good time. I want to say thank you to the invisible people that were a part of that, that put that together. All right. And then、um, what I was thinking about the other day was、um, when we were at、uh, Club 939, Hawaii's premier gentleman's club.、Uh, another day, different day, different day. Totally unrelated. Yes. And then there was. You guys' segues are awesome, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> of course we are. We're professional. We've been doing this. is the 65th episode of this thing. We ain't brand new, man. <laughs> you think we're about to retire? No. Can't stop. Won't stop. Uh uh. Except so, during crosswalks. <laughs> yeah. So, anyways, there's this there's this stripper that just kept going around and kept asking if you want a private dance and private dance. And then we told her no like 10 times. And this wasn't, t h e r e s nothing to do with what we were talking about earlier. Completely different. Okay. And I was, I was getting irritated. This is the first time I was getting irritated by a woman who wanted to take her clothes off in front of me. And it was, I was just, I think there should be Yelp for strippers, not strip clubs. Oh, I, I want to pounce on that. <laughs> Yelp for strippers. Oh, sorry, I burped it. Yelp for strippers. I would like to know how I get to become a Duke, a kick ass Duke. <laughs> Like, maybe we can also say, like, oh man, Roxanne over at、um, the other strip club down the street or across the street from here. 
Oh, Roxanne from over there, man. She doesn't drop her bottoms. You know, one star. Or Yvette at such and such across the street. Guys, if we were to get together and organize like that, we would be up on these strippers, man. They would they would stop asking us to give them money for them to dance with. They would actually beg us to for, for them good to, reviews. To up their Yelp reviews. Yes. And then they, they, they can get their pay scale that way. They oh come on. And then she hands you a card and it has like the QR code mm. and you scan it and then it'll up her um no. Maybe and maybe after like maybe she can stamp it. Yeah. Ah. After like the fifth one, you can get like a free dance or something. Yeah. Awesome. I mean, Chad, like a my, Safeway card. Yeah. <laughs> 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 a my Kai card. How do you say sex in, in Hawaiian? Lap card. Lap card. There you go. Your fifth one is on the house. There you go. Yeah. Wait. So is it is it on like uh, one of those keychain <laughs> cards, not a regular size one? Like, is it like hanging off a nipple ring or something? Whoa. Oh. That's, uh, and, and then you bring your phone and you, you scan her QR code that's on her nipple um, ring type keychain thing. Oh. Patent pending, by the way. Patent pending. There you go. The Guys with go. Issues Yelp review. <laughs> we claim that. Yes, and if you guys need us to review anything, let us know. We will, we will, y you know, review whatever's. Uh, Russell was lucky enough to go to Heights Drive-In today. I, I didn't go to the Heights Drive-In. I went to the dentist over there. Oh, okay. So we were talking about uh, on our way over, as we always do, food. Uh, Aia Heights Drive-In in Aia Heights. Yeah, I actually, I, I actually got forced to go to the dentist today. I didn't, I didn't want to go. By gunpoint? Pretty much. Was, really? was it a terrorist? Uh, well, when you're in a relationship, they call it a girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> when you're not in a relationship, it's perhaps a terrorist. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And she listens to the show. You know, well, she knew I didn't want to go. Uh, and, you know, he's like, you, you, when was the last time you went to the dentist? Last, um, See, you don't remember. No, it, I was going to say it, either early this year or late last year. About maybe about a year. Yeah, within a year. When was the last time you went? Uh, the last job before this that gave me dental insurance. Yeah, it's just like I don't know. You just don't want to go because most of the time it's probably bad news. Because then you reflect on what you you know you ate. <laughs> So, um, you have a whole pork chop stuck between your teeth, Russell. <laughs> I had popcorn stuck in my teeth today. You I, have haven't, I haven't had popcorn in like no way a couple weeks, and she's oh, like, "Oh man, yeah." She was she was doing some sort. Of, she was doing basic cleaning, right? And she said, "Oh, you have to come back in for deep cleaning." Oh, I'm like, "What are you doing now?" <laughs> and it hurts too because they dig into your yeah. gums. Yeah, and then she's like, "Look, I got food." <laughs> She's laughing at me. I'm like, what is that? She's like, I don't know. I'm like, that looks like popcorn. <laughs> I haven't had popcorn for weeks. <laughs> like the skin of the kernel? Yeah. Oh, gosh. Somebody doesn't floss. Do you floss, <laughs> sir? Not all the time, but I do. <laughs> if I, I feel like something's stuck, then I'll floss. Generally speaking, I only floss after steak. Oh. Because I want to make sure that I'm getting to eat all of it. Ah. Uh -huh. so, so whatever shows up on, the, on your floss, you're like, that's for me. Yeah. Yep. Bonus. It's, it's the clothesline. It's like, oh, I'm eating off the clothesline. Mm, nom, nom, nom. It's like a necklace of meat. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's like you're eating. Um, it's like you're eating skin tags. <laughs> okay, that's gross. gross. <laughs> you made it weird, James. As no, I always, always do. Oh, thank you very much. Do I make it weird? Yes, I do. Why? Because that's what I do. That's how we roll. Yes, you know, speaking of weird, I was watching this documentary. It was um it took place in India. Um not the the one Columbus discovered, <laughs> but the one he was trying to get to. Um and over there a lot of them don't have toilets in their house, in their homes, in their houses. So they go by like a river. They walk far away to some place that's designated for them to poop, and some of them will go by a river to to defecate. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to see how many different ways I can say make doo doo. <laughs> so they have this one river that 
the the dude who was doing the documentary, he couldn't even like every step he took, he almost stepped on somebody's crap. And he oh, like, so they don't. Some people don't wait to get to the river. Yeah, I guess like out like outside the river or along along sides of the river or whatever. And he said it's so he he was puking almost the whole time. He said the air is just so thick and like of this of the crap and their mentality is or their thinking is you don't crap in where you where you live because mm -hmm. making doo doo is a filthy thing. So you don't do it inside your house where you sleep and where you eat. And Coming off of that, I, you know, when I went to the bathroom, well, on Sunday, my, my dad and my brother and my mom's watching the football games on Sunday. Then I go in the bathroom to take a crap. And as I'm sitting there thinking about what the way, you know, about this documentary, I'm like, I'm sitting here on the other side of this. And I'm sitting facing the wall that is dividing where I'm taking a dump and where my family is watching TV and they're facing me. So I was like, if this wall was to like just all of a sudden disintegrate or disappear, I'd be sitting on the toilet looking at them, looking at me. How close is it to the kitchen though? Well, the kitchen would be like, there's a wall. There's a wall on, uh, on my left as I'm sitting on the toilet would be where the pantry is. And then the kitchen is on the other side of that. Oh, man. So you were even closer to pooping by the food than you were to your dad. Well, I wouldn't be ashamed if I pooped next to food, but I'll be ashamed if I'm sitting there and everybody's looking at me. <laughs> so I'm thinking of the, like the, you know, like the, um, when you look at a, a blueprint of a home, mm -hmm. you see, you're looking from, the t from God's point of view, as they call it. <laughs> and then you see the, just the, the walls drawn in. Right. So I was thinking like, wow, from above, this must look really weird. Like, why is that guy making doo doo right next to where his family and they could be eating too, you know, like watching the game and eating, you know, that's so weird. What song have you got coming in there? <laughs> no, no, no. I'm just, is, just... is that something to do with me taking no, a nothing, dump? It has nothing to do with you taking a dump. Is that, um, what is that? Um, uh, from the movie, Oh brother, where are Yeah. I love that song. Go to sleep, you little baby. Go to sleep. We should sing that. Really? But you know the words? If it's if I hear it, I sing along. With oh, okay. It. That's um the Dixie Chicks. It's not the Dixie Chicks. In the movie. Oh, okay. It is. Yeah. Oh, okay, I didn't know that. Yeah. I love that movie. I like that. I am a man of constant sorrow. I love that song. And the other one. Um, what is that song? We're in the jailhouse now. <laughs> We're in the jailhouse now. I love that song. I listen to the soundtrack all the time. All right. I think it's time for some news. Some news, news, news. News, news, news. <laughs> news, news, news. <laughs> time for the news. It's time for news, 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 ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the news. That was, how was that? Was that all right? I'm that was all right. Trying to play around with the beginning thing, right? No, I thought I thought that was fine. I, I was just I thought that we had news music. Yeah, we, we should have news music. Yeah, right? we'll have it next week. All okay, right. no, because you played news news music last week. So yeah. what, news music that that's tough music. to say. Music music. Well, every every week we'll say we'll have it next week, <laughs> and that's the music. That's like how some people pay rent. Yeah, and and you know, um, I would like to start with. Some celebrity news. Highest paid TV actor, mm -hmm. Ashton Kutcher. Not surprising. But out of all the TV you've seen, do you think he deserves? No. I, I, I'm not surprised that he gets paid. Does he deserve it now? He I doesn't think deserve it, but two, uh, two and a half men is like the biggest show, right? That's not. It's just so weird. I don't know why it's the biggest show. I don't think it is the number one show, though, anymore. Not it's anymore. Not? The Big Bang Theory is the number one show. Oh. Yeah. Because that's so much better. I love it. Yeah, he's yeah. the one that doesn't like you know, it. No, you know, at one time... God, it sounds so weird in my microphone. At one, at one time, it was really good. When it first started, I think the first season or so, when the when the humor was actually geeky. And for two and a half men? or No, for uh, Big Bang. Big Bang oh, and right. then they started dumbing down the humor to be 
funny for everybody. And then I go, eh. Yeah, it's kind of like um, relationship humor now, more so. Well, behavior humor more than uh, the, the what do you call it? the physicist guy's humor or the comic fan hu- comic book fan humor. Oh, what's your take on this, Chad? Uh, I've hated it from the very beginning. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, like. Basically, my issue with the show is that I never felt like uh, the writers of the show were on my side. Uh, I don't understand how anyone that self-identifies as a nerd can be like, oh, that's my show. It's like, no, that's the show where they're making fun of people like you. Hmm. I see where he's taking it. Yeah. He's taking it personal. <laughs> Chad. Chad. I'm just not a really big fan of Chuck Lorre. Okay. Heim. Levine is what, is what Charlie Sheen says. <laughs> I'm Levine. You know what's funny is that there's a, a new dude in our class, in my uh, Microsoft Word class. Intermediate level now, fellas. Yeah, yeah. Yay. What? So anyways, and he was he's a former teacher, mm-hmm. and he's taking a refresher course, and so he's in this intermediate class. And he wears this heavy dude, and he wears a Superman shirt, and there was... One time in the class where he stood up and he, he did his arms, you know, <laughs> uh, 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 on his on his waist. He went and, Superman. And stuck, yeah, he stuck out his chest and like, like he was Superman. I was thinking, do nerds really think that if they wear the shirt that they are the superhero? <laughs> well, when I wear my Daredevil shirt, I try not to look at anything. <laughs> All of a sudden, I can hear everything. Like sonar. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, uh, Ashton Kutcher makes $24 million for two and a half men. A season? Yeah. Uh, show's numbers are down from $28 million at, their, at their peak, which is, I think, when um, Charlie Sheen was still there. Right. Uh, to $11.6 million. You know, I think he really did make the show, though. Charlie Sheen was funny to watch. Yeah, yeah. Um, Kutcher made sixty million dollar for the movie Jobs, which bombed. By the way, mm-hmm. did you watch it? Uh, I didn't watch it. It was decent. Uh, the second highest paid TV actor is John Cryer, who's also on the Two and a Half Men. He makes twenty one million dollars. Wow! And Angus Jones, that's the son, right? The one that plays the is son. Is he still on the show? Yeah, he's he, here and there. He's not. He's not every episode, but he, he's still making eleven million. Holy cow! That's a lot. It's just that's like us paying Paul Kane, you know, almost a, a half of like, what we make. Like twenty bucks to be on the show. <laughs> <laughs> well, he would make half of what we make, so which is half of zero. <laughs> half of an invite to someplace. <laughs> All right. Uh, next is uh, Donald Glover. You guys know yeah. from um, Community. He's clapping. He was also a stand-up comedian. He was also he used to be a writer for Thirty Rock, and he's young. It's, okay, it's funny because on his one of his uh, jokes um, on his set is Donald Glover, and he, he used to go by Don Glover, but then when it was written out, it looks like Dong Lover. <laughs> 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 and anyways, he had Instagrammed a, a picture of a note that he had written on uh, like. A hotel um, stationery or something. A really sad hotel based on the stationery. Yeah. And then uh, what he wrote, people were concerned about if he's okay. What he wrote was, I'm afraid of the future. I'm afraid my parents won't live long enough to see my kids. I'm afraid my show will fail. I'm scared my girl will get pregnant at not the exact time we want. I'm scared I'll never reach my potential. I'm afraid she's still in love with that dude. I don't think that there's a problem. I don't think to worry. I mean, comedians, Chad's a comedian, I'm a comedian, Russell's a comedian. Comedians, we tend to, when we think of something, we take it to the most darkest extreme and we take it to the most happiest fairy tale ending. We think of the whole, we want to see how far we can take our thoughts and our ideas. So for him to talk about that, to me, it's like, that's nothing. He, you know, it's, he didn't even, if, if he started talking about like suicide or something like that, then there's some concern. He never he never mentioned anything about suicide, but it was actually a series of uh, Instagram pictures. Like I think there was like five or six in total. Oh, uh-huh. he mentions he never mentioned suicide. No, no. Yeah, I mean I don't think there's anything to worry about. 
It, he's just vocalizing stuff that <clears throat> most people don't talk about. Right. And it, it's, I mean, the w- only one thing, I guess, that struck a chord with me was the, I'm afraid she's still in love with that dude. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think every guy who's been in a relationship always has that, hmm. That's the hmm factor right there. See how long I had to hold that to make <laughs> That's a hmm factor. So do you still love that, dude? Hmm. Oh, that sounds like uh, J. Cop, J.C. Cop. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Uh, anyways, um, celebrity twins. Twins are celebrities that have twins that you didn't know about. Okay. Like uh, Giselle Bunchen. Did really? you know that she's a twin? Exactly. They made two of those? Right. Tom Brady's so lucky. <laughs> oh, I thought that was you, GZ. GZ. Because that's a nickname I would assume he uses for Giselle. GZ. She has a GZ's. Anyways, <laughs> her, her twin sister, Patricia, unfortunately for her, she's a fraternal twin. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so usually when you have fraternal twins, you have the good looking one and then you have the Patricia. <laughs> Is is that the clinical term? Yeah. <laughs> well, you have the the Giselle, and then you have the Patricia. Anyways, Patricia actually she's not that bad looking. Patricia's she, still a dish. Yeah, <laughs> but she's it's so weird. She her she's not as tall as Giselle. Mm-hmm. Like she's maybe like up to Giselle's chin or something in height. Uh, fraternal twins. Anyways, so Giselle Bunchen. This is like the um, twins the movie. Giselle Bunchen, Arnold slash Arnold Schwarzenegger, is a supermodel mm-hmm. married to the uh, one of the winningest quarterbacks of all time, mm-hmm. and Patricia Danny DeVito is Giselle's manager. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be famous too. I want to go to the famous parties. Oh, no, uh, you can be your sister's manager. Okay. Does that mean that I get to go to the famous parties? <laughs> And it's funny because I was uh, watching School of Rock. I remember uh, Miranda Cosgrove's character. Mm-hmm. Everybody could play an instrument. Everybody could do something. And then there was just her. And it was like, uh, you be the manager. <laughs> oh. Anyway, okay, Alanis Morissette is a twin. Did her twin also have sex with uh, the uncle from Full House? Which uncle? Um, the comedian the cut uncle? it out one, yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. In Dave real life, Coulier, that's Dave what his name is. Yeah. Yeah. There, there's rumors that that the album was about him, or there's a song that's about him. Really? You ought to know. Yeah, you Supposedly, ought to know. That's about him. Wow, weird. No, she never mentioned. Cut it out. <laughs> <laughs> Stop with that chipmunk. I hate those twins. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so her twin brother, mm-hmm. uh, Wade. So Alanis Morissette is an actress, a musician, um, and Wade is a musician, and a yoga instructor, an author, and a therapist, which means he's just a deadbeat brother. <laughs> you ought to know. <laughs> that, I, that's Hollywood for a deadbeat. <laughs> mm-hmm. I, lo- I love that the idea that all of these uh famous people like their twins they have a much more normal name like giselle and patricia ah. and then there's lannis wade right oh ah. well let's see if it holds up. uh john header no napoleon kaufman oh, napoleon, napoleon Kaufman. dynamite napoleon dynamite not the black <laughs> running back that played for the raiders <laughs> <laughs> Imagine if he started doing that dance. Oh, jeez. So John Hatter, um, Napoleon Dynamite, mm-hmm. brother Dan, works on visual effects in Hollywood. Already, uh, boom, idea done. Now here's this one might might work with your um your theory there, Chad. Kiefer Sutherland is a twin. Mm-hmm. Kiefer, sister Rachel. Okay. I, I would I would say that still holds up. Yeah. She works in TV production in Canada. So that's... She can't even do it in America. <laughs> she can't make Hollywood. <laughs> she can't even make Des Moines, Iowa. <laughs> she's, she's in Canada. Did they film 24 up in Canada? They usually do, though, when they... Oh, I don't know about 24. 
But I know, like, um, most, a lot of movies, they try to do it in Canada for tax purposes. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if they do TV up there. What's that though? one? Um, X Factor, yeah? Um, no, not X Factor. Uh, X Files. Jeez, all these shows. Okay, last but not least, Scarlett Johansson is a twin. Mm-hmm. Her brother, Hunter. See, I guess like, Hunter is like, oh, that's an unusual name, but your sister's name is Scarlett. That's way more unusual than Hunter. So Hunter appeared alongside her in Manny and Lo. And if you see them, their faces look alike. So if you're making out with Scarlett Johansson, and then... You need to pull her hair to make sure it's not a wig. (laughs) Or if you're having sex with her, and then the brother walks in, you're kind of like, I'm still at it. I'm still... (laughs) I'm going to continue. You didn't break my stride. (laughs) It's only weird if you make it weird. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, don't turn around. Just look at me in your eyes. It looks the same to me. Gross. Okay, last but not least, Paula Patton. Who's that? She is the most beautiful woman in the world. Is that the one that's married to uh, Hey Hey Hey? Blur. Yep. Yeah, yep. Um, Robin Thicke. Yes. Paula Patton is in that movie. Um, you th- I thought Fat Albert. You thought Robin Thicke when you went. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> well, I already know the story. That's okay. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> I don't know what happened if Fat Albert sang blurred lines that it would somebody like I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll uh, send you the mashup later. <laughs> I you found did. it. You found one? Yes. <laughs> Is it on YouTube? Yep. Oh, you got you to gotta search now. Okay, so Paula Patton, she is the most beautiful woman in the world. Okay. Do you... We, I have an argument there, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. No, you, you totally have an argument. Yeah. I, I say she's prettier because she looks more... She's not like supermodel. Actually, she she's not supermodel, but she's very pretty. She's been on Criminal Minds, is it? I don't know. She's been, there's a movie out right now that she's in. Um, uh, I know Ricky Smiley's on it. Um, anyways, search her. Paula Patton. She's married to Robin Thicke, who sings Blur Lines. Now, on the video, there is a, in balloons, it says, Robin Thicke has a big dick. Right. And they, and these people were interviewing Paula Patton, asked mm-hmm. her if it's true. Now, she stumbled, you know, because she's, she's eh, well, eh, she said something to the extent, like, um, if, if, she was in um, the Miami Heat locker room or something like that, and it, but ultimately she's she's saying yes, he he does have a giant. Why why the Miami Heat locker room? I, I don't know. I, I think that that means that he's gifted for a white man. I guess. Or he, I guess he can hang out in the uh, locker room. The Washington the Wizards guys. locker room, though. <laughs> 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 the Bullets. Those guys have. When did they change from the Bullets to the Wizards? Um, I think... Was it when Gilbert Arena shot somebody? <laughs> yeah, no. That was before, I think. I think it was before. Maybe that was the reason. Anyways. Oh, okay, I do have the blurred one. You want me to play it? Yeah, Fat Albert Blur Lines. <laughs> hey, the cartoon sound. Oh, yeah. Hey, everybody, get up. Oh. Anyway, we can do this because it's, it's the news. Yes. It's a new show. Media. Uh. Is this the one you're talking about, Dad? Yes. To me. Not too loud, now. It sounds like robots. Is it dark enough? I think he said, hey, girl, come here. <laughs> Oh, he's singing his hey, hey, hey. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Okay, that was cool. That was cool. It's good enough, though. Hey, <laughs> hey. Mushma. Dabba, da, bubba, da, bubba, da, whatever. Da. Humana, humana. All right, what you got going on in the stupid and bizarre news there, Chad? Uh, First stop, Madison, Wisconsin. Uh, the, uh, they wanted to open up a snuggle house. Not... The bear. No, no, Snug- not not the bear. Like spooning snuggles. Oh, I thought you were gonna say a house made up of fabric softener. Yeah, uh, that yeah, would be a nice place to live. It would smell a, good for a little while. Because when you're in there too long, it's gonna be like, oh, like you ever stayed in the aisle 
the the where the other the laundry detergent is it's like mm, refreshing you just walked into uh this beautiful place they just slapped you in the face with this potpourri smell and then you stay there longer than than five seconds and you want to murder it's like too much wow wow i, did. I, I don't wa- want to go to the market with you ever <laughs> i want to drown people with tide <laughs> <laughs> but i smell so good i want to murder somebody <laughs> so what i got a ring around my collar I want to whisk you in the face. <laughs> Sorry, that's showing my age. Now. I don't think they make whisk anymore. <laughs> whisk. Let me get, let me get my um, 409 <laughs> and my p- Comet and Ajax. All right, go oh, ahead. Oh, that's not what you're supposed to wash clothes with, James. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> anyway, uh, this is a house with uh, four, four women and one dude all in their 20s. Uh, yeah, what you do yeah. is you pay them to uh, snuggle with you in bed. Hmm. They wanted to open that. However, uh, city officials are uh, putting it on hold until they're comfortable with the operation. Uh, right now, it was supposed to have been opened on Tuesday, but they're waiting for a few more permits. Is that some place you would like to visit? Uh, I'll be honest with you. When I did, when when I had a girlfriend, or I've had a couple girlfriends, but when I had a girlfriend and it was snuggle time. It always started out snuggle time, <laughs> and then all of a sudden somebody gets a boner, <laughs> and it was you, <laughs> right? It was you? Yes. Okay. Except that one time. Uh, <laughs> okay, I phrased that wrong. <laughs> and then I would get a boner, and then all of a sudden it's changed. It's like mm-hmm. okay, um, snuggle snu- time is snuggle time is over. Yeah. It's you know somebody's got to help somebody with their swelling. Uh, <laughs> so, so you couldn't work there either then. I would get fired, <laughs> but <laughs> I would apply and lie about my application. Oh, yeah. No, you no. could, like, snuggle with them and then you snuggle times over. <laughs> no, you can stay or you can go. But somebody's going to have fun. <laughs> At the very least, give me a hand. <laughs> it's time for the rinse cycle. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Speaking of clean things, something that's very much not clean, the Magic Restroom Cafe in L.A.'s City of Industry. It is America's first toilet-themed restaurant. Now you take a shit while eating? <laughs> you probably shouldn't, even though the stools are shaped like toilets. Oh, but they're not functional toilets? No, no, they're functional stools, though. But oh, do not. they have a hole in it? No, no. Oh, it's the just toilet? like no sitting on a toilet seat. Oh, okay. Yeah. They actually... It might be uncomfortable after a while. I don't know, because you can stay on a toilet for a really long time. Yeah, if it's a comfortable seat. If though. it's a good toilet. Yeah. Because there's some seats where it's like, uh, and your leg gets numb. And Currently, the menu items include uh, things like golden poop rice, uh, black poop chocolate sundae, and smells like poop braised pork. <laughs> and for dessert, you could get your bloody number two, a vanilla strawberry sundae. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> Bloody number two. Yes. Oh, somebody's got a colon problem. <laughs> yeah, they're not going there. <laughs> Why does everybody everything have to have poop? Why can't they just say doo doo or, or crap or shit? They need to hire you. They're not imaginative enough. <laughs> Obviously. I get in there like, oh, can I get um the diarrhea milkshake? <laughs> in mint? <laughs> <laughs> Can I get the um, Can I get that diarrhea milkshake with corn in it? <laughs> <laughs> can I have the baby sauce, the baby doo doo sauce? Uh, anyways, all right, go ahead. Oh, other things that James would not like to eat. Did you know that they make uh, they have cockroach farms in China? To eat? Yes, yes, they raise the cockroaches. Apparently, uh, the price since 2010 has went up from $2 a pound to $20 a pound of cockroach. How many cockroaches is it? Because they don't weigh that much, right? Uh, Not only do they not weigh that much, but uh, they're dried out when they're uh, weighing them. Oh, so they're dead. Yeah, yeah. You raise the cockroaches and then you dump them in a vat of uh, boiling water to kill them. Wow. Well, I guess if they... I, I'm not trying to make it better, but I guess if they raise them on a farm, they would feed it regular food and not the crap that roaches normally eat. Uh, they favor rotten vegetables to feed them. Oh. You, they usually like will take stuff from nearby restaurants, 
like the old food that they're gonna throw away and give it to the cockroaches. Yuck! I, I can't stand roaches. So it is it is a lucrative business in China, though. I'm sure. JC Cop reference again in there somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> JC, would you like to make ten thousand dollars a year? That'll go very far in China. Yeah. Gross. Oh, uh, anyway, moving over to England. Uh, Edward Smith has had more than one thousand sex partners, but only one of them was a person. Oh, this guy loves cars. No, he doesn't just love cars. He really loves cars. He's in love with cars? Yes, he's in love with cars. He's actually <coughs> met a new Volkswagen Beetle that he wants to be in a committed man-car relationship with. Do you have to what say man-car relationship? <laughs> <laughs> Once you say the VW he Beetle. He doesn't want to see other cars anymore. Oh, gosh. Does he stick it in its gas hole? <laughs> <laughs> that would be going back door, buddy. <laughs> yeah. But not really. <laughs> oh, she's got dual overhead cam. <laughs> what is your what is your best drink? Diesel. <laughs> Holy cow. Where, so, he has sex with these cars? Yes, yes. He has sex with the cars. Uh and he's not the only one. Apparently there's at least rec- uh, there's recorded cases of at least five hundred people in the world that are mechaphiliacs. Mechaphili- people that want to make love to machinery. Uh, how do they do that? I guess they put their penis in wherever they can fit. <laughs> Mechaphiliac. It sounds like something from Pee Wee Herman. Mecha, like a high, mecha, hiney ho. Hiney ho. The zombie. <laughs> I wish to fly and have sex with cars. How do you? How do you do that? Where, like, do you like, um, like just start rubbing on the steering? I mean, how do you like? Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm about. How do you do that? Oh, the leather seats. That can constitute saying, I have made love to a car. I have no idea, and I'm not planning on researching oh. this to find out. Do wait, wait, what if he's raping them? <laughs> oh, yeah, no, he, of course he's raping them. He cars, can't get can't consent. Give consent. Right. Yeah. Imagine, like, Herbie the love bug, and he finds it, and, it, and Her- <laughs> Herbie is like, oh, what are you doing? <laughs> Whoa, that doesn't go there. Oh, uh, One thing he'll never, ever, like, he can... He can go put in the gas hole, as Russell said. <laughs> go, you know, do doggy, and then he can also maybe open the hood and do, you know, put it in the, um, the through the front. He'll never be able to do missionary with these cars. He probably could, but it'll take a lot of work. Look, well, a lot of body work because the car is gonna be all scuffed up on the back. Right, right. He's gonna hold up the wheels. <laughs> yeah, rub. Look at that axis. <laughs> I'm gonna rub my axle. I'm gonna rub it on the axle. Can you imagine? Like he he works at a gas when he was a teenager, and it's because he's always loved cars like that. And he works at a gas station, and like he's a, a gas attendant or whatever. And then and then he comes over, and and you tell him, yeah, I get a twenty dollars um, unleaded. And uh, can you look under the hood? Is it? Oh my! <laughs> under the hood. I have your consent. Uh, in my in my mind, he sounds like uh, is it Snagopus? Under the hood, even. <laughs> 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 oh man, check, can you check the oil? Oh, he's pulling out that dipstick, and he's just like he's pushing it in and out, and he just never like checks. He just keeps shoving it. In and out. <laughs> he's like, oh, the transmission, the transmission oil is low. Can I squirt? I mean, put some in there. <laughs> This is getting weird. It's You're going to say something weird. weird. You're going to say something, Russell. No, I wasn't. All right, all right, go ahead, chat. All right, finally, over in uh, Arizona, there's a <clears throat> teacher that's in hot water at Cactus Shadows High School for trying to teach his advanced drama class a controversial play called The Goat or Who is Sylvia? A Guys with Issues special report. We've managed to get a partial transcript of this play. Okay, so we gonna do it? Or is she de- delivering the news? There's only two parts here. You're cool? Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm cool. Okay. Can, can you set this up? Are okay. you gonna be Ross? I'll be Ross. You be Martin. How about we make it Martina? No, let's just go with Martin. You sure? But then yeah. we make her a girl? What is this? What is this? Can you set up the scene? Ha- have you read it, Chad? 
Uh, Ross and Martin uh, are two fr- two longtime friends, old college roommates. Mm-hmm. One of them <laughs> is a famous architect now, and the other one is interviewing him for his uh, late night uh, television program. Okay, so Ross is interviewing Martin. Uh, I forget. Okay, so this is a story that uh, the drama teacher brought to the students. Yes, that was. And it's supposed to be some really crazy stuff. Like yes, it's supposed to be very controversial. This is after <coughs> the interview is finished and they're catching up on old times. Okay. And now, cinema. <laughs> Your life, apparently, you and Stevie... Okay, well, let me start again. Um, we usually try to do the show that's... Clean. Well, clean, but this... Because we're doing a drama. This is a script that we're reading. Yeah. So bear with us. This is NSFW, not safe for work. So if you listen at work, if you listen with your kids, turn it down or teach your kids some new words. Here we go. Your life, apparently. You and Stevie. How'd you fuck it up? Oh. That. Getting, getting an answer out of you. Okay, okay. As I told you, I've never been unfaithful. Never needed it. Never. Yeah. Yeah, right. You told me. And then and one day. Yeah? And then one day. That's it? And then one day. One day. Well, I was house hunting. Barn hunting, actually. Stevie and I had decided it was time to have a real country place. A farm, maybe. We deserved it. So I was in the car about 60 miles out from the city. Stevie couldn't come with me. Beyond the suburbs? Yes, beyond the suburbs. Farms around it, small farms. And I found a wonderful place. A wonderful farmhouse and a lot of land. The old back 20 or whatever it is? Right. Whatever. And I called Stevie and told her she had to see it. And I'd put a hold on it till she could see it. And Stevie was, well, a farm. She said, but I said, wait. And the real estate guy was like, okay, with that for a while. And I was driving out of town to the highway and I stopped at the top of a hill. Crest? Right. And I stopped and the view was... Well, not spectacular, but wonderful. Fall, you know, when the leaves turning in the town below me and great scudding, scudding clouds and those country smells. Cow shit and all that. New mown hay, fella. <laughs> the smell of country. The smell of apples. The roadside stands with corn and other su- stuff piled up high. And baskets full of other things and beans and tomatoes and the gray white peaches you could only get in the summer. The whole thing, right? When does this start getting weird and know, controversial? The, what's, what's weird is uh, his accent keeps changing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, seriously. Okay. Oh, you city boys. And from up there, I could trace the road though, towards the farm, and it gave me a kind of shiver. The ludicrous often does. Anyway. <laughs> anyway. Anyway, it was pretty wonderful. And I was getting back in the car, about to get back in the car, and all my loot, vegetables and stuff. And it was then that I saw her just, just looking at me. Daisy May, blonde hair to her shoulders. Big tits in the Calico blouse. Bare midriff. Blonde down to the navel. Or blonde at the navel, too. Piece of straw in her teeth. You don't understand. No? No blonde hair? No tits? No. And there she was looking at me with those eyes. And it was love. You don't understand. No. It, it was love? No. It wasn't love? Yeah, yes. Yeah, yes, it was love. But I didn't know it right then. How could I? Right then, it was good old lust, eh? Dick's trying to get big in your pants. I am a, I am a jerk <laughs> in the <this> story. <laughs> I am a jerk. All right, go ahead, go ahead. You don't even understand. 
I didn't know what it was, but I was feeling. It was, it wasn't like anything I felt before. It was so amazing, so extraordinary. There she was, just looking at me with those eyes of hers, and. Well, did you talk to her? Did I what? <laughs> <laughs> did you talk to her? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yes, I did. I went up to her, to where she was, and spoke to her. And she came down toward me, and in those eyes, I touched her face, and I did not want to talk about it. I can't talk about it. All right. Let me help you. You're seeing her. Yes. Oh, yes, I'm seeing her. You're having an affair with her? Oh, uh, what? <laughs> having a uh, what? <laughs> Have you read enough of this? <laughs> You're screwing her. Oh, it gets better. Yes. Yes. I'm screwing her. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> and you're in love. That's it. You see? What is? What do I see? I am seeing her. I am having an affair. I guess no, that's not the right word. I am screwing her, as you put it. All of which is beyond even. Yes, I'm doing all that. And you're in love with her? Yes, <laughs> yes. I am. I am in love with her. Oh Jesus! Oh Sylvia! Oh Sylvia! I almost <laughs> dare not to ask this. But who is Sylvia? I can't tell you. Who else but me? You can't tell Stevie. It would. No. Then who is she? Who is Sylvia? Don't laugh. <laughs> Please don't laugh. This is Sylvia? Yes. This is Sylvia. Who you're fucking? Don't say that. Whom? With whom you're having an affair? Yes. Yes. How long now? Six months. Jesus. You have to tell Stevie. I can't. I couldn't do that. You have to. And if you don't, I will. No. Ross, please. You're in a very serious dress on an Asian. <laughs> you're in a very serious job. <laughs> You're in a very serious <laughs> trouble. <laughs> you sure are, buddy. You sure are. Are we going to keep going? It's almost finished. Oh, it's almost done? Oh, end scene. Here we go. Let's make it dramatic. But, Ross, you don't... This is... <laughs> This is a goat. You're having an affair with a goat. You're fucking a goat, Martin. Yes. That was my line. <laughs> oh. <laughs> way to step all over his uh, you have to wait Yes or no? Are you fucking a goat, Martin? Yes. <laughs> and scene. Wow. Wow, I'm glad we actually stuck to the end. I was yeah. like, okay, when? when is this? <laughs> I was like, where does it get weird? Okay, so are the parents upset with the fair or that it's a goat? <laughs> They're upset with the whole thing. Wow. Not only the goat part, uh, it also has an eight-year-old gay kid in it. And uh, they're just like, oh, the language <clears throat> is way too strong. Not because there's an... Oh, I guess it's normal to have an... Sex with a goat. <laughs> well, they're classifying it along with all the other stuff. Okay, so yeah, I, mean, I can see where if 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 my daughter came home with a script like that, I'd be like, "What the hell is this Catholic school teacher, man?" Well, what if it was to happen in seven years? I mean, it'll be like normal in seven years. No, I'm not saying that it's going to be normal. I'm not trying to argue in favor of goat fucking. <laughs> I'm, I'm just saying she'll be older then. Oh, oh, she's old. She's out of my house. Whatever's, just change your last name. <laughs> <laughs> C 
be Tyler Reese Kardashian for all I care. <laughs> <laughs> Goat. Fuck. And now we're going to take the show back to clean side. <laughs> Car fucking and goat fucking. And that's the news. News, news, news. That's the news. News, news, news. That's the news. Hey, you know what we forgot to do? Jimmy's Top 10. Jimmy's Top 10. Jimmy's Top 10. Jimmy's Top 10. Yes, Jimmy's Top 10. The top 10 things that the University of Hawaii football team can do to boost attendance at their games. And we're going to start at number 12. <laughs> uh, no, okay, top 12. These are the top 10 things that the University of Hawaii football team can do to get more people to come to their football games. Well, because, you know, attendance is getting lower. Yes. Of course, uh, number 12 would be two words. Topless cheerleaders. Woo. Boom. The two words? Topless is one word, right? Yes. Yeah. Cheerleaders is one word? Yeah. Yes. All right, two words. Topless cheerleaders. I'd go to that game. I'm I'm for it. It won't be the 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 won't be that big cuz normally cheerleaders don't have big boobs, but Yeah, eh. they tr- they try and make them small so they're easier to throw. Yeah. <laughs> the the boobs are easy to throw? <laughs> no, no, the cheerleaders. <laughs> oh, that was since we they threw the cheerleaders just instead of a football. Man, that might reach yeah. <laughs> Number 11. Okay, during halftime, an MMA fight. <laughs> I th- I think because MMA is huge here in right. Hawaii. Yes. Yeah, they got uh, they got their own magazine, MMA Hawaii magazine. Number ten. Number ten. Uh, show the finale of Breaking Bad <laughs> during the game. <laughs> he is the one who scores. <laughs> yeah. What's my What's the quarterback's name? Heisenberg. <laughs> Heisenberg. You bet your ass. I forget what he said though. Number damn, nine. I said you damn right. It's gonna make that right. Okay, number nine. Take out the chairs and add homeless tent city. Hashtag Occupy Aloha Stadium. And those, <laughs> at least those fans, would stay for the whole game. The whole game and, and the, the whole season. <laughs> yeah. And you just have those guys need to clean up the stadium after. Yeah. Boom. Problem solved. Yeah. See, and then you can furlough the real maintenance guys. Boom. Boom. Number eight. <laughs> B-Y-O-B. I believe that. Would you go? Let's bring your own beer? And I mean, it would just be a place to go and drink beer. And have a lot of fights. There you go. MMA fights. Make your own. Number seven. Sell green meth at the concession stand. <laughs> <laughs> That's the University of Hawaii colors, by the way. Well, what would be the Hawaiian version of Heisenberg? Um, Hawaiisenberg. All right. There you go. Number six. Number six, let the crowd play football. <laughs> That'd like be that. a whole lot worse, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, you're participating. He's like, well, I play college football. Number five, two more words, June Jones. <laughs> Sadly, yes, that would bring oh. a lot of people to you yeah. because we would be winning again. But the traffic might be. I think we are too. one of four teams that are that still haven't won. Out of the nation, mm. either one out of five or one out of four. And June Jones has won already today, yeah. this weekend. Oh, okay. Yeah. I don't know. Is it number five or number four? We are now number four. Have another team play the visiting team instead of the University of Hawaii <laughs> football team. <laughs> we heard you like football, so we put a football team in your football team <laughs> so you can watch football while you watch football. I tell you what, we'll get the. You can actually sell two games in one day. Like you know how you have uh, comedy shows you you sell out the first the first mm-hmm. show and then you do in the second show. You can actually do this t- if like say in the University of Hawaii plays in the Mountain West Conference, they bring down um who else is in the um uh, Air Force, right? Okay. So Air Force is Air Force is coming to Hawaii to play football against Oregon. <laughs> All of a sudden, you want to go to the game, right? Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, Mariota's playing. I'm going to that game. So we just got to bring Oregon down every week, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, he, the kid was here this um, during the bye week, I think, to watch his um, cousin or nephew or something play in high school. Oh, nice. Yeah. Number three. Number three, have the University of Hawaii Wahine volleyball team play during halftime. <laughs> they always sell out. 
<laughs> number two. Number two, University of Hawaii Rainbow Lap Dancers. There you go. Boom. <laughs> I'll tell you what, you can even stay till two in the morning, like four hours after the game is over. <laughs> and it'll be still be, that place will still be packed. And number one. The number one thing you can, the University of Hawaii football team can do to get more people to come to their football games uh, rescind the Mountain West Conference uh, title or name and join the OIA in high school football. <laughs> they would dominate. Yeah, I don't know. That Farrington team looks tough, man. <laughs> <laughs> and that's Jimmy's Top 10. Jimmy's Top 10. Jimmy's Top 10. All right, it's time to close out the show. And we always close out the show with Uncle Russell's Useless Trivia. Trivia, this is Uncle Russell's trivia. We want to know something, Uncle Russell. Trivia, trivia. Boom. <laughs> trivia. <laughs> Tute. Uh, oh, and, treat. Yeah. Australia has a lake named from Lake Disappointment. The lake's name is Disappointment? Yeah, it's called Lake Disappointment. Let me guess. It's dried out? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> then why call it a lake? Well, I, well sometimes there is a lake. Most of the time there's not. Oh, it's so sometimes, sometimes it's lake disappointment. Other times it's a disappointment pit. Yeah. <laughs> or it's the actually, it's not a disappointment pit because it actually is a successful pit. <laughs> 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 so he's either a disappointing lake or an awesome pit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, and also... Um, you guys ever eat hot peppers or something really spicy? Yeah. And Try what do you, not to. Yeah, what do, you, what, what do they normally tell you to ease the pain? I was told... Um, milk? Bread, yeah, or milk, like dairy. Milk. Yogurt. Yeah, yogurt. I've got a new one for you guys. Alcohol. Boom, yeah. So the, vodka it, or other forms of liquor, they'll ease the pain of chili peppers. Is it ease the pain or does it just, you just drunk, you numb? A little bit of both, I'm sure. Because I heard that... Vodka also helps with not feeling the punch that you get later on in the night. So if you drink enough vodka, you can just take all kinds of punches to the face and you won't feel a thing. You will be knocked out, but you won't feel it. Does it matter how strong the liquor is? Nope. You know, as a matter of fact, after this, I am going to have some spicy poke bowl oh. from the firehouse kitchen here at... The Crossroads mm. in Hawaiian Bryant. And that was? Uncle Russell's useless trivia. That was trivia. He made us learn <laughs> something. <clears throat> Uncle Russell, thank you. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you guys for listening. Remember, if you guys have a problem with us or if you guys want to love us, email us at guyswithissues at gmail.com. Uh, like our fan page, facebook.com slash guyswithissues. Follow us on Twitter at guyswithissues. You can Google Guys With Issues and everything you see, jump on it. Because Guys With Issues need fans with issues. And right. we love you guys. And we're going to be doing more stuff. We're going to have giveaways coming up as we got sponsors knocking on our doors, wanting us to promote their business. Uh, right now, I want to give a shout out to club 939 hawaii's premier gentleman's club who we we still we will still be recording out of there it's just that every now and then you know we like to move locations change it up yeah so we are here today uh and we were here last week at the crossroads we'll probably be here next week as well next week wednesdays even if you guys want to hang out and just listen to the show hit us up on, on facebook or, or our own personal pages and if we can arrange something you can sit in and, and join in the laughter and, yeah, yeah. And maybe Chad will give you a lap dance. He's good at it. <laughs> yeah. And Chad is a nice ass, by the way. All right. Thank you guys for listening. Uh, please share our posts. Tell all your friends about us so that they can listen to the show. Um, you can listen to it for free anytime on iTunes. Now, it's better that you listen live because the live show has more show. iTunes show, won't, you won't hear everything that you heard live. Uh, but if you listen to this part, then it made it to that cut. <laughs> but if you didn't, then oops, I'm saying this for nothing. But tell your friends, 4.30 every Wednesday um, on Spreaker. Uh, follow us, and then you'll, we'll, we'll let you know how to listen to it. Okay? 
All right, thank you for listening. My name is James Mane. As always, I am with Russell Kealoha. Goodbye, bitches. And the Colombian drug lord, Chad Santiago. Thank you for listening to the podcast. God bless you. Good night. Make money with your mind, child. Love with your hands.